Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to talk about the definition of continuity. If you remember from the first section, there was a shortcut for finding the limit of a polynomial function. So if you knew that you have a polynomial function f of x, or even a rational function where there was a non-zero denominator at x equals c, and you were trying to find out what was the limit as x approaches c of this polynomial or rational function with a non-zero denominator, you can just simply plug in the x value as x equals c and evaluate the function at c, and that found out the value of the limit. The y values were approaching f of c whenever x was approaching c from the left or the right side. Well, it turns out that functions that satisfy this property are what's called continuous at x equals c. So in this section, we're going to talk about the continuity properties and how can they can be used to sketch and analyze graphs. So in this video, we're going to talk about how can you use the definition of continuity to determine if a function is continuous at a point or not continuous at a point? And then number two, if a function is not continuous, identify the type of discontinuity at a point using the definition of continuity. So let's start off discussing what does it mean that a function is continuous at a point. Well, in college algebra, you may have talked about continuous functions and whether a function was continuous or not over an interval by basically thinking of by informally thinking that a function is continuous over an interval if the graph over that same interval could be drawn without lifting your pencil or your pen from the paper. So for example, if you have this function, f of x equals 0 0.5 times x minus 2 times x minus 4 times x minus 6 all squared plus 2, well, we know that this is a polynomial function. The domain of a polynomial function is negative infinity to infinity, and that's using interval notation. The graph of this function is provided below. Notice that this graph has no breaks in the graph, no jumps in the graph, and no holes in the graph, and no vertical asymptotes. So I can draw this graph with one continuous motion of my pencil or pen. And so that means informally that the function is continuous by looking at the graph. However, in calculus, we want to be able to have a more formal definition of what continuous means for a function at a point. What does it mean if a function has no breaks or jumps or holes in the graph? So that gives rise to what's called the continuity at a point definition. A function f of x is continuous at a point at x equals a if and only if this property is true. The limit as x approaches a of f of x, in other words, the y values for the function as x approaches a from the left side and the right side of x equals a is the y value at x equals a, in other words, f of a. And if a function is not continuous at x equals a, we say that f of x is discontinuous at x equals a. So let's see why the definition is, is the way it is by looking at example one. Continuity of a function defined by a graph. Study the continuity of a function f of x given in the graph below using the definition. The limit as x approaches a of f of x equals f of a. So part one, is the function continuous at x equals one? So looking at the graph, yeah, it looks like the function is continuous because I can draw the graph through x equals one and I could draw it without lifting my pencil or pen. But why does it satisfy the definition of continuity at a point? Well, the definition said the limit as x approaches a, well, in this case, the a is one, so the limit as x approaches one of the function, is it equal to the y value at x equals a? And again, in this case, it's f of one. So we're checking this condition. The limit as x approaches one of f of x, is it f of one? In other words, are the y values for this function as x approaches 1 equal to the y value at x equals 1? So let's look at the graph. Well, the limit, the two-sided limit, exists if the left-sided limit and the right-sided limit are the same value. So let's check from the left side of x equals 1. It looks like the y values are approaching 2 on the left side of x equals 1. On the right side of x equals 1, it looks like the y values are also approaching 2. So the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x is 2. And now the second condition to check is, does the limit equal the y value at x equals 1? Well, where is the point at x equals 1? The point is defined at this filled-in point. At x equals 1, the y value at that point is 2. And so, yeah, this definition for continuity is satisfied. The limit is 2, the y value is 2, and so f of x is continuous at x equals 1, using the definition of continuity. All right, number 2. Is the function continuous at x equals 2? Same reason, we're going to use the definition of continuity in the same way. We're going to find out, is the limit as x approaches 2 of the function equal to the y value at x equals 2? So again, look at the graph. So notice at the graph, the limit 
From the left side of x equals 2, the y values are approaching this hole in the graph. The y values are approaching 2 on the left side of x equals 2. On the right side of x equals 2, the y values are also approaching 2. So the limit does exist, the two-sided limit. So the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x is 2. Now the second condition. What is the point? What is the y value at x equals 2? Looking at the graph, when x equals 2, the y value is defined to be at this point, which is where y equals 1. The limit may exist, but that may not be where the point is. In this case, it looks like the point has been moved down to this 2 comma 1. So f of 2 equals 1. And so since these two are not equal, the limit was equal to 2, but the y value was 1, that means f of x is discontinuous at x equals 2, and it's because these two are not equal to each other. And looking at the graph, the reason why it's not continuous or discontinuous is because there's a hole in the graph at x equals 2. Okay, number 3. Is the function continuous at x equals 3? So same condition, limit as x approaches 3 of f of x. Does this equal the y value at x equals 3 or f of 3? So again, check the graph. So at x equals 3, notice that we need to find out if the limit exists first. So if you approach x equals 3 from the left side, the y values are approaching 2. But if you're approaching x equals 3 from the right side, notice that you're on this part of the graph, and the y values are approaching 1. So the first thing we needed to check was, does the limit exist as x approaches 3? It doesn't, because we're approaching two different values. If you're approaching 3 from the left side for the function, the limit was 2. But if you're approaching 3 from the right side of the function, it's 1. Since these two are not equal to each other, the limit doesn't exist, and there's no way it can be equal to the y value because there's no value for the limit at all. So that means f of x is discontinuous at x equals 3 because the limit doesn't exist. And looking at the graph, why is that the case? Because we're ha we have a jump in the graph. From the left side, the y values are approaching 2. The right side, the y values are approaching 1. That means the graph had the jump at x equals 3. All right, one more. Number four, is the function continuous at x equals 4? So again, check using the definition of continuity. The limit x, x approaches 4 of f of x does it equal to the y value at x equals 4. So let's see what the graph looks like. So notice at x equals 4, we already know that there's a hole in the graph at x equals 4. So it's not going to be continuous, but we're going to explain why using the definition of continuity. So approaching 4 from the left side, you're on this part of the graph, the y values are approaching 2. If you're on the right side of x equals 4, you're on this piece, and it looks like the y values are also approaching 2. So this time the limit does exist, and the limit is equal to 2 as x approaches 4. What's the reason why the function is not continuous? It's because there is no point at x equals 4. It looks like the point should be at 4, 2, but there isn't a point there. So again, the limit as x approaches 4 of the function was 2, but notice that there was no y value at all. There was no point at x equals 4 defined for the function. So f of 4 does not exist. And so since there's no way to compare these two, f of x is discontinuous at x equals 4. And that's because there was a hole in the graph at x equals 4. So in the previous example, we talked about different types of discontinuities. Well, we can actually classify these as one of these three that we saw in the previous example. So types of discontinuity at a point. Number one is called a removable discontinuity. A second type of discontinuity is the jump discontinuity. And the third one is called an infinite discontinuity. So in the previous example, we saw that there was a hole in the graph for the function f of x when x equals 2 and also at x equals 4. So here was the graph that we saw in example 1. Notice at x equals 2, there's a hole in the graph. So that's what's called a removable discontinuity at x equals 2. And also there's a hole in the graph at x equals 4. So same reason, that's called a removable discontinuity. But at x equals 3 was a different reason why the function was not continuous. This is what's called a jump discontinuity because the function jumped values at x equals 3. On the left side of x equals 3, the y values were approaching 2. And on the right side of x equals 3, the y values were approaching 1. So the, va the y values jumped from y equals 2 to y equals 1. And so that's a jump discontinuity. So those are two types of discontinuities for a function at a point. The third one is called an infinite discontinuity. So this is one that we have not encountered yet. So let's look at this rational function f of x. It's f of x equals 1 divided by, in parentheses, x minus 2 all squared. We're, we know that this function is not defined at x equals 2. If you plug in x equals 2, you'll be dividing by 0. 
And so something's happening in x equals 2. It's a vertical asymptote. So if you look at the graph, as x gets closer and closer to 2 from the left side and the right side of the vertical asymptote, the y values will either go up towards infinity or down towards negative infinity. Okay, looking at this graph, this is the graph of f of x equals 1 divided by x minus 2 all squared. Notice that there was a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. That's a dashed line, not part of the graph, but it gives us an idea where the graph is shooting up towards infinity or shooting down towards negative infinity. On the left side of x equals 2, it looks like the y values are unbounded and they're growing increasingly towards infinity. And on the right side of x equals 2, it looks like, again, the y values are growing increasingly towards infinity. They're unbounded. So the limit is infinity on the left side of x equals 2. The limit is infinity on the right side of x equals 2. So the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x is infinity. But notice that you can't plug in x equals 2 because there's a vertical asymptote. So there's no way to compare the limit with the y value. The limit doesn't exist because it's infinity. And the y value doesn't exist because there's no point on the vertical asymptote. And so this is what's called an infinite discontinuity at x equals 2 because the y values are unbounded as you get closer and closer to x equals 2. So here's a question. Which functions that you have seen in the past are continuous? Well, we already know that polynomial functions are continuous. So linear functions, quadratic functions, cubic functions, quartic functions, those are all continuous functions for all real numbers. Now, other types of functions you may have seen that are continuous. Exponential functions, you may have seen those in college algebra. Those are continuous from negative infinity to infinity. Logarithmic functions, so log functions or natural log functions, those are continuous. Even though they have a vertical asymptote, they are continuous on the domain. And the radical functions are also continuous. So example two, we're going to look at the continuity of functions defined by equations. Using the definition of continuity of a function at a point, so using the, the definition we use in example one, determine whether the function is continuous at the indicated points. So we're going to be given different types of functions, and we're going to figure out whether the function is continuous at the value of x that they, that they provide in the problem. So number one, you have this function f of x equals 2x subtract 3, and we're going to find out, is this function continuous at x equals negative 1 using the definition of continuity? So using the definition, we need to check that the limit as x approaches negative 1 of the function is equal to the y value at negative 1. So let's check that. The limit as x approaches negative 1 of the function, well, just replace the function with 2x minus 3. So x approaching negative 1 of the function 2x minus 3. We know that this is a linear function or a polynomial function, so we can replace all the x's with a negative 1. 2 times negative 1 for the x, minus 3, and that gets us negative 5. Now the second condition to check, what's the y value at x equals negative 1? Well, if you notice, if you replace all the x's with a negative 1, you also get negative 5. And so, yeah, the function is continuous at x equals negative 1 because it satisfies the definition of continuity at a point. All right, number 2. This time we're going to look at this function g of x, which is defined to be x squared subtract 5x plus 6 in the numerator and x squared subtract 4 in the denominator. Is this function continuous at x equals 2? So again, using the definition of continuity, does the limit as x approaches 2 of the function equal the y value at x equals 2 at, for the function? So there's a couple things we need to check. Does the limit exist? So let's find that out first. So the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x, so the limit of x approaches 2 of x squared minus 5x plus 6 all over x squared minus 4. Well, one thing we could try is plugging in x equals 2. Maybe the limit will approach the y value exactly as if we just plugged in 2 into the function. So if you plug 2 into the numerator, you get 0. If you plug in 2 in the denominator, you also get 0. So again, this is what's called an indeterminate form of type 0 divided by 0. So that means the limit may still exist so let's try to find out the limit by using algebraic techniques. So if you factor this trinomial, two numbers that multiply to 6 and the same two numbers that add to negative 5 are negative 2 and negative 3. So x minus 2, x minus 3 is how the numerator factors. The denominator is a difference of squares. It's x plus 2 and x minus 2. So notice that there's an x minus 2 in common in the numerator and denominator. That's why we're getting the 0 divided by 0. So if you simplify the x minus 2 in the numerator and denominator, What's left over, you'll have limit as x approaches 2, x subtract 3 is left over from the numerator, and x plus 2 from the denominator. Now notice that you can plug in x equals 2 in for x's. So if you plug in 2 into the numerator, 
drop the limit notation because we're now plugging in x equals 2. So you get 2 minus 3 in the numerator and 2 plus 2 in the denominator and you get 4 in the denominator and negative 1 in the numerator. So the limit does exist. The limit is negative 1 fourth. So as you get closer and closer to x equals 2 for this function, the y values are getting close to negative 1 fourth. So that doesn't mean the function is continuous at x equals 2. That just means the limit exists. So the left side of this equation is negative 1 fourth. What's the right side? What is the y value when x equals 2? Well, we found this out earlier. So whenever we plugged in x equals 2, we got 0 in the numerator and 0 in the denominator. And that was called an indeterminate form of type 0 divided by 0. In other words, there is no point at x equals 2 for this function. So g of 2 is undefined. And so this means that the function g of x is not continuous or discontinuous at x equals 2 because there's no way to compare the limit with the y value. The y value didn't exist at x equals 2. And in this case, just to let you know what's happening with the graph, there's a hole in the graph for this function g of x at x equals 2. All right, one more thing before we finish up this video is that we're going to talk about is with the definition of continuity, how can you use the definition of continuity to help you figure out the value of a limit very quickly? So example three, continuity of functions. Use continuity of a function at a point, if possible, to evaluate each of the following limits. So number one, find the limit as x approaches negative three for this function x cubed subtract 4x. Well, we know that this function is a polynomial function and polynomial functions are continuous for all real numbers. So in other words, it's definitely continuous at x equals negative three. So you can plug in x equals negative three into this function for the x's and find out the value of the limit. So negative three cubed, subtract four times negative three and you'll come up with negative 15. So that's what the y values are approaching. Okay, number two, find out the limit as x approaches zero of x subtract four divided by x plus three. Now we know that this is a rational function but where is this rational function undefined? Well, set the denominator not equal to zero. X plus three can't be zero, otherwise we have undefined function. And so that means X can't be negative three. So the domain of this rational function is all real numbers except for negative three. Negative infinity to negative three, don't include negative three, so parentheses, union, parentheses again on negative three, to infinity. We're trying to find out the limit as X approaches zero. So the function's continuous at x equals zero. The only problem with the function was x equals negative three. So you can directly plug in because the denominator is not zero at x equals zero. So zero subtract four in the numerator, zero plus three in the denominator, and so you get negative four thirds is the limit for this function. The y values are approaching negative four thirds whenever x is approaching zero. Okay, and then number three, find out the limit as x approaches two of x subtract two divided by x squared plus x subtract six, that's in the denominator. So again, we know that this is a rational function because you have a polynomial divided by polynomial. And now find out the domain. So the domain are all the x values that do not make the denominator zero. So if you take the denominator and set it not equal to zero, the denominator will factor as x plus three times x minus two. So that means x plus three can't be zero and x minus two can't be zero. So x can't be negative three and x can't be two. So to write the domain for this function, x can't be negative three, x can't be two, means in interval notation, negative infinity to negative three, parentheses on negative three, union, negative three to two, so all the x values between negative three and two, parentheses on negative three and two again, and then union two to infinity. So let's go back. Find out the limit as x approaches two. Well, two is not in the domain. So let's find out what we need to do to find out the limit. So we already factored the denominator. So the limit as x approaches two of x minus two, the denominator is x plus three times x minus two. And so notice that there's an x minus two in the numerator and denominator. So that can be simplified. And so the limit as x approaches two of what's left over from the numerator after you cancel out the x minus two, there's a one. And if you cancel out the x minus two from the denominator, there's an x plus three left over. And so now you have a rational function where you can plug in x equals two into the denominator. So the limit, drop the limit notation because we're now plugging in x equals two, you get one divided by two plus three, and so the limit's one-fifth. So this limit means that the y values are approaching one-fifth for this function whenever x is approaching two. So this is a good place to stop our first video on continuity of a function. We use the definition of continuity for a function at a point several times, and how to relate the definition of continuity with the graph of a function. And we talked about the three types of discontinuities, a removable discontinuity, a jump discontinuity, and then also an infinite discontinuity. And we also found out how to use a definition of continuity to help us evaluate limits very quickly.
So if you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about one-sided continuity and continuity of functions on an interval.